Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. For many, the word submarine conjures up images of stealth marine warfare, sneak attacks, and powerful ballistic missiles fired from just under the surface of the water. While all of these images are correct, submarines are also used for commercial purposes. All around the world, these underwater vehicles facilitate undersea tourism, research, and even the making of films and documentaries. But where these subs tend to allow for short trips and exciting experiences, larger Navy submarines often require sailors to stay underwater for months at a time. For large global navies like that of the United States, submarines are highly advanced vessels designed for both strategic attack and defense. As such, standard submarine operations involve a variety of missions and responsibilities that contribute to the nation's overall security. Ballistic missile submarines, for instance, are tasked with maintaining a continuous at-sea presence, known as deterrence patrols. Crews of these vessels generally spend six months at sea per deployment before returning to the shore for leave. Though they are tasked with acting as a deterrent in the event of a war, they spend much of their time collecting valuable intelligence by monitoring communications, tracking enemy movements, and conducting reconnaissance operations in sensitive regions. This is the benefit of being in a vessel that can move and operate undetected. However, as with any other ship, the 80 to 130 men and women on board still need to eat three meals a day, sleep comfortably, and when not on duty, take part in some recreation. <laughs> Very inventive, I thought. <laughs> These necessities have forced modern military submarine designers to incorporate well-equipped kitchens, storage areas, and other facilities that increase the quality of life for sailors on board. The USS Columbia is a Los Angeles class attack submarine launched in 1994. It is more than 360 feet long and boasts a complement of 110 men and 12 officers. Living aboard a submarine means sharing highly cramped quarters with the other men and women serving on board. In many cases, it also means spending more time under the water than above. A tour of the vessel accurately depicts just how difficult life can be on these vessels. The brain of the sub is the control room, which is located just underneath the coning tower and is flanked on either side by the sonar room and nuclear reactor compartment. Some 
This is also where the commander and sailors direct the movement of the sub, as well as its ability to submerge and ascend. The crew quarters are located underneath the control center, where crews sleep in bunks that they often have to share. This means one person is generally sleeping while the others are on shift. <clears throat> Under the crew quarters in the lowest section of the ship is the torpedo room, which houses more than 20 MK-48 torpedoes. The mess deck is one of the most critical sections of the vessel, as it keeps the crew fed, allowing them to do their jobs from day to day. The cooks who work aboard these submarines are among the most important people on the ship. Every day, they must devise between three and four buffet-style meals. This requires a lot of planning and quite a bit of innovation. For instance, submarine galleys are compact and efficient to make the most of the limited space available. They are equipped with essential cooking appliances, such as ovens, stovetops, microwaves, and sometimes deep fryers. Unfortunately, they cannot use open flame due to the potential of starting a fire. The food preparation process is much like that of a regular kitchen. <laughs> However, the ingredients are carefully chosen to ensure they have a long shelf life and do not require refrigeration. Though there are a lot of canned foods stored on board, cooks are often supplied with ample amounts of fresh vegetables and meats as often as possible. This allows them to be much more creative with their menus. However, if the sub were to be called into battle, they might switch to freeze-dried meals to ensure they have enough to feed the crew until the mission is over. Of course, water is a precious resource on submarines. Therefore, the galley crew must be mindful of water usage during food preparation and cleaning. Under the best conditions, submarines cannot always simply return to port for resupply. When that happens, the U.S. Navy will generally schedule an airdrop. In this case, a C-17 Globemaster or similar cargo plane will be loaded with food, equipment, and other supplies that can be placed in a floating pallet and tossed overboard. Self-deploying parachutes will allow the package to safely reach the water, where it can be retrieved by the submarine crew. Though these types of operations are not generally considered dangerous, the submarine must be on the surface to retrieve the supplies.
Therefore, resupplies are typically done in friendly waters, with little chance of an enemy detecting the airdrop. We never know. Due to their ability to hover and move vertically, as well as horizontally, helicopters are an excellent choice for submarine resupply missions. Even in rough conditions, Navy helicopter pilots can take up a position just above the submarine and use its external hooks or bay doors to deliver payloads right on the deck. This is an ideal option whenever a submarine must be resupplied while on a mission, where the amount of time spent on the surface is best kept to a minimum. As important as the safety and security of a nation may be, there are endless reasons to spend time underwater. Recreation is one, but there has also been a concerted movement over the past few decades to better understand the ocean, its wildlife, and how human behavior impacts it. Research submarines are a big part of this process, as are underwater habitats, like the Aquarius Reef Base. Owned by the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, the Aquarius is an underwater research laboratory in the United States off the coast of Key Largo, Florida. Though stationary rather than mobile, the Aquarius provides all the benefits of being on board a submarine while providing a crucial platform for marine research and scientific studies, particularly focused on coral reefs and related ecosystems. The lab sits roughly 60 feet below the ocean floor and allows scientists and technicians, often referred to as aquanauts, to remain on board for around 10 to 14 days at a time. Another undersea activity in which hyperbaric chambers play an essential role is saturation diving. This is a special diving technique used in deep sea environments, where divers work at depths that would cause significant decompression times if they were to surface after each dive. The method involves living and working in a hyperbaric environment for an extended period, typically several days or weeks, to allow the body to adjust to the increased pressure at depth. Hyperbaric chambers, also known as decompression chambers, are sealed, pressure-resistant vessels that simulate the conditions experienced at the desired diving depth, so that divers can come and go safely. Get your... Saturation diving is used extensively for underwater construction and repair, and allows divers to reach depths of up to 1,000 feet. As those of us on the surface continually look under the sea for answers, all of these technologies will continue to become more and more critical. That's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.